In this video, I'm going to teach you how to create resilient strategies using the latest version of the Poly library, such as Circuit Breaker, Retry, Timeout, and Fallback. I'm going to show you what the new Poly API looks like, what are the differences compared to the old API that you are probably used to, and what are the performance improvements that were made in the latest Poly version. This is the GitHub service, which is a strongly typed HTTP client, and 70% of the time, it's going to throw an application exception saying that the GitHub API is temporarily unavailable. And for this reason, we need to introduce the Poly library to graciously handle this failure. We're going to do this in the user's endpoint where we are calling the GitHub service and let's start by installing Poly in our project. So I'm going to look for the Poly NuGet package and you'll notice that the latest version is version 8 that was published on September 28th. Today is September 29th when I'm recording this video. So the new version was released just yesterday. So let's install it and see what are the new things that we get with Poly version 8. Of course, before I jump into the new Poly API, I'm going to show you what the old Poly API looks like and how we can define our resilience strategy. Now, before version 8, you need to access the policy class or the generic policy class to configure your resilience policy. So before version 8, they were called resilience policies and from version 8 and onwards, they're called resilient strategies. Naming convention aside, let's see how to create our retry policy. So I'm going to say handle, and this allows me to define what kind of exception I want to handle using this policy. I'm just going to specify the application exception because this is what is being thrown in my GitHub service. And the next step is to define my actual policy. And you'll see that there are many options to choose from, such as the circuit breaker, the fallback, the wait and retry, and so on. I'm just going to use a simple retry policy to configure a retry for a specific number of attempts. Now, I want to comment on the difference between synchronous and the asynchronous APIs. In this case, the retry method will allow you to define a synchronous policy, and you'll see that it returns a retry policy. However, because my API is asynchronous, I'm going to call the retry async method to specify how many times I want to retry calling the API before giving up. Let's say I want to retry two times after the initial failure, and I'm also going to define a simple delegate which is going to take the exception and the current retry count and it's just going to log a message to the console. So let's say console write line. I'm not even going to use a logger. This is just an example. And let's write something like this. So the current attempt is the retry count. So I'll say current attempt specify the retry count here and then i'm just going to log the exception itself so that we can see what went wrong so the retry async method gives us back the retry policy which you can store inside of a variable and then you use this policy to execute your asynchronous method that can fail so what that will look like is we're going to replace the call to get by username async with our policy which exposes the execute async method. For the argument of this method, I'm going to provide a function that's just going to return the task returned by my typed HTTP client. And you'll see that the return type of this policy is our GitHub user, and I can return it from the API, assuming that the policy executes successfully. Otherwise, we are just going to end up with an exception. I'm going to start the application now and show you how this is working. I'm going to call my endpoint from the Swagger user interface and I'll specify my GitHub username as the user that I want to fetch from the API. Now, if I execute this, we're going to get back an exception, which means that all of the retries in the policy have failed. And if I open up the console of the API, you'll be able to see the logs from our policy. So here is the first log saying that the current retry attempt is one, and then there's the body of the exception itself. And then the policy called our HTTP client again, which also failed. So you can see the log saying that the current attempt is two and the body of the exception. So both of our retries failed, unfortunately, and we ended up getting an exception. So this is how resiliency works with the old version of Poly. And now I'm going to show you how you can achieve this 
with the Poly version 8 API. So the new version of Poly doesn't use a static class anymore. The entry point to define your resilience strategy is called the resilience pipeline builder and you have the generic and the non-generic variant. I'm going to use the generic version so that I can specify the return type of my API call which is a nullable GitHub user. And now I can use the resilience pipeline builder to define my resilience strategy. You'll notice the similar methods for the resilience strategies. There were previously static methods on the policy class. Now they are instance methods on the resilience pipeline builder. So we have the circuit breaker fallback hedging strategy. We also have the retry strategy and you can add different combinations of them depending on what you are trying to build. So let's try to add the retry strategy because this is what we had in the first example using the poly version 7 API. This method accepts a retry strategy options instance and if you don't pass anything inside it's going to use some default values. So your best option is to specify this instance yourself so let's go ahead and create it. I'm going to say new retry strategy options of GitHub user, which can be nullable. And let's specify some property values on this type. I'm going to start by setting the maximum retry attempts, which is going to be two. And this is the same value that we had in the retry async call in the old API. Then you can set the back off type. The default value is constant and I'm going to use this to set up the delay between my retries to be zero. So I'm going to say that the delay is equal to time span zero. Then I can define which exceptions I want to handle using this resilience pipeline. You can do this by creating a new predicate builder and specifying the generic type that you have in this case. And then I can just call the handle method and specify the exception type that I want to handle. Setting the should handle property here is the same as calling the handle method in the old API. I think you'll agree that the new approach is a bit more verbose, but I'm also going to show you what are the advantages of the new poly version. Now, I'm also going to add a delegate on the retry. We're going to use the retry arguments to define the delegate. And I'm just going to log to the console as we had here. So let's say console right line. I need to grab these values. So this one will come from attempt number and then the exception will be available on the outcome of the current attempt and then you can access the exception property. And because this is asynchronous, I need to return a value task. So I'll say return value task completed task to satisfy the on retry delegate. Now that I'm happy with my resilience pipeline, I can go ahead and build it. This is going to return a resilience pipeline that I'm going to store inside of a variable. And then I can use this pipeline to execute my API call. How that's going to look like is you call the pipeline and you'll see that it exposes the same methods that you had before, only this time the synchronous and the asynchronous versions are available on the same pipeline instance. So this is an improvement. Now they are no longer separated. They're combined into one API and let's call the execute async method. I need to create a delegate which is going to accept a cancellation token. I'm just going to name it token and we're going to then call our API. So I'll use the code here, GitHub service, get by username async and we can say await and call this method and then I just need to await the call to execute async to accept my result back. So let me just align this a little bit. I'm going to comment out the previous version and we're going to grab our user from the new policy. So I'll say var user and it's going to come from executing the resilience pipeline using the new poly API. So we are creating a delegate that uses the cancellation token which you can then pass to your asynchronous method so the new API fully supports cancellation and where will this token come from? Well that is another argument to the execute async method so I can specify one more argument and provide my cancellation token value. Now by default this will be cancellation token none but I can fix this by providing a cancellation token in the endpoint. So I'm going to add a new dependency which will be provided at runtime 
and now I have access to a cancellation token connected to my API request. I can use it to pass it to the execute async method, but this is not going to be valuable if I don't pass this cancellation token to the typed HTTP client. I'm going to expand this method to accept a new parameter, which is going to be my cancellation token. And if I go over there, I also need to make sure to pass the cancellation token to the actual call to the HTTP client. So now our service fully supports cancellation and it's also backed up by the resilience pipeline. Executing this pipeline achieves the same behavior as before, where the API call will be retried two times before either returning a result or throwing an exception. Now I want to show you a different alternative to the retry resilience strategy, and let's define another strategy right here, which is going to use the fallback resilience strategy. So let's create another pipeline. I'm going to create a new resilience pipeline builder, specify GitHub user as the generic argument, and I can just say add fallback. This will allow me to specify my fallback strategy options. And what I want to do with this options instance is set the fallback action. I'm going to discard the argument here and use the outcome class to call the from result as value task method. I can use this method to specify my fallback value, which is going to be just a blank GitHub user. I'm also going to specify the generic argument to make it the same as my strategy. And now all I need to do is to build my pipeline. And when I execute this, if we run into an exception, we're going to return back a fallback value, which is just a blank GitHub user. And the caller of the API doesn't know that something went wrong. Creating a new pipeline instance every time you need a resilient strategy is a bit cumbersome. So the new version of Poly has support for dependency injection of resilient strategies. So I'm going to show you how this works. We're going to need to install the poly extensions library. Let me find it from NuGet. And this is the NuGet package that I want to install. And it's going to give me some extension methods on the service collection interface that I can use to define my resilience pipeline. So I'm going to say builder services, add resilience pipeline. I'm also going to have to specify some generic arguments. So the first generic argument will be the type used for my service key. And the second argument will be the return type of my API call, which is the GitHub user. So let's give this a descriptive key of GitHub users fallback. So this will be the name of our resilience pipeline. We're going to get access to a resilience pipeline builder. So let me create my actions argument. And then I can use this pipeline builder to define my resilience pipeline. I'm going to use the fallback pipeline that I have here. So I'll just copy this call from add fallback and head back to my program file. And I'll say pipeline builder add fallback and this will register my fallback strategy under this key. And then how I can use this is from my endpoint, I'll comment this out. We need to inject a service that's going to allow us to resolve our resilience pipeline. This service is the resilience pipeline provider. I need to specify the generic argument, which is going to match the type of the key that will be used to resolve the strategy. And let's just call it pipeline provider. And how we use this, is by calling the pipeline provider to get back the pipeline instance. So I'm going to say pipeline provider get pipeline. I'll specify GitHub user as the generic argument and I can pass in the GitHub users fallback as the resilience strategy that I want to get back from my pipeline provider. And this is how you can register your resilience strategies with dependency injection and then resolve them when you need to use them. Just to show you how the fallback is working, if I call the GitHub API from the Swagger user interface, we're going to get back our fallback value, which is just an empty user. Now you'll see that if I keep calling this API, eventually it's going to succeed and return back the actual user values. But if I call it again, it's going to fail and we're going to get back the fallback value and the fallback value itself is returned from the fallback resilience strategy, which we defined with dependency injection to return a blank GitHub user when the pipeline fails. And now let's talk about the performance improvements in the latest version of Poly. I cloned the entire Poly repository to my system 
so that I can run the strategies benchmark. And now we're going to take a look at the results. This is the first benchmark that we're going to take a look at. So you can clearly see which version of the API we're using. There is either version seven or the new version eight. And if you take a look at the performance difference, you'll see a huge improvement in favor of version eight. Performance improvements are always welcome, but what is interesting about version eight of Poly is the allocation, or in other words, the lack of allocation. So Poly version eight was designed with no allocation, and you can see this presented here in the benchmarks where the allocated amount is zero bytes. Let's take a look at a few more benchmarks that I have here. And if you take a look at the results, you'll see that the version eight of Poly is significantly faster and has no allocation. And the same pattern of significant performance improvement and zero allocation is repeated in the other benchmark results. Let me know in the comments what you think about the new Poly API and if the performance improvements are good enough to make you switch to the new version. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons. And until next time, stay awesome.